It's the Rink Live podcast. We're unofficially at mid-season of the college hockey season. I'm Mick, uh, I'm I'm not Mick Hatton. I'm Jess Myers. That's Mick Hatton. <laughs> <laughs> and we're happy to be joined by uh, the number one team in the country if you go by the pairwise rankings. Although I always say if you look at those before about January fifteenth, you're you're kind of wasting your time. But Minnesota Gophers are off to a ten and two start in the Big Ten, a fifteen and five start overall, and uh, have played some very good hockey. Been a lot of fun to watch. Bob Mosco is joining us from his office over there at Three M Arena at Mariucci. Bob, yeah, you having fun with this group? I would imagine. Yeah, I mean it's they're they're one they're a great group. Um, um, they got they just kind of got a little kid in them. Uh, that's what's <laughs> fun is the they're. You know, they, they just kind of roll with the punches. They come in every day. Nothing really phases them. Uh, obviously, they've got some talent, but they, they've been enjoyable to be around. Just been a great group of guys. And and that's what, you know, any coach is going to tell you when you come to the rink and you're having fun with your group. That's uh, that's really important. And, and then when you find a little success, and it's just the first half, we know that. But um, good group, real good group. Yeah, how, how fortunate I guess did you, did you feel after the uh, after the season ended last season that you got the number of guys that you got back? You know, obviously Matthew Nice, Brock Faber. I mean, you you had a number of guys that uh, very easily could have signed. Uh, yeah. Were you feeling pretty good about uh, the fact that you got a number of those guys back? Well, yeah. I mean, it it, it you know you never know how it's going to go uh, because it you know. I, I've always said at the end of a year, right when your season, it takes on its own life mm -hmm. because you, you have no control as a coach of what's being said behind the scenes, you know, parents, advisors, you know, the NHL teams. And, and I don't have a lot of, you know, my, my talk with the players and my meetings all happen long before the end of the season. I, I don't have any meetings. I just sit back and wait. And, and, uh, but I think the greatest, you know, testament to it is that, these families and these young players trusted our program and felt that they were in the right spot to stay. And, and, you know, Ryan Johnson and, and Jackson Lacombe and, and Brock Faber and Matthew Nyes, of course. And, and uh, the fact that they chose to stay around, we, you know, that was a compliment to our, our program and all the people involved in our program. And, and, uh, and I, and I truly believe that, you know, you looked at the Stanley cup playoffs last year in the last, I, I might be off on my numbers a little bit, the last four teams playing, there were only, you know, like six players under 22 and, and five of them were 22, you know, Brock Faber turned 20 this summer. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it sure is not going to hurt. It, it's not hurting any of their careers. Um, and, and I hope, reversing that i hope it's helping their career uh to advance quit more you know to get them into a faster point uh, or faster spot to play in the national hockey league one day but yeah was i happy uh our whole team everybody was excited about that and and did we think we we're getting all three of those defensemen back not a chance um <laughs> the over under was on one <laughs> let alone three but um uh, and that is a big reason why we are, uh, our team is sitting the way it's sitting here at the, at the break. It's because those, those, you know, that group of players chosen to come back and they really give us, uh, you know, not just great hockey players, but great leadership and great heart and great character. You talk about older guys making their NHL debut. That that segues perfectly into the next thing I was going to ask you, Bob. Uh, Sammy Walker played his first NHL game Saturday. He played his first home game uh, Monday night a, against Edmonton. Talking to Dean Evison, his coach, they've raved about his maturity, the way he's handled himself on the ice and off the ice. And one thing Dean Evison said is he's not a 19-year-old kid. He's 23 years old, starting his NHL career at that point. Obviously, you know, he's seeing, I would imagine, some of the things you saw in Sammy as a, as a three-year captain for your team. Well, there's, there's two things about Sammy is, is one, he can skate. I mean, he, he is an elite skater and two, he is a competitor. And, and that's the quiet thing behind, you know, that, that when we had talked to anybody and talked to the wild that, that he's a tough customer and he, he, he's a, he's a competitor. And if you can skate, you compete like that, you know, and then of course he's got talent, um, you know, I know it's just two games, but he's looked awful good in there and, and we're awful proud and very happy for him. 
Uh, Jimmy Snuggerud and, and Logan Cooley obviously have had big impacts on, on your team, uh, you know, here in, in the early going. I, I, I know you you used to t- tell me all the time that 14 points was, was, was a good freshman season, and uh, these guys are obviously off to a much better start than that. Uh, were, were you anticipating, I guess, that they were going to be this good this early? Um, 14 points is a good freshman year. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, you know, if they get to 20, I think that's a, that's an excellent year, but there's no question that these two players, you know, first round draft picks, they're going to have, they're that, they're that for a reason. Um, mm-hmm. But freshmen, it's all about confidence and getting comfortable. And it doesn't matter if you're playing at Minnesota or Duluth or North Dakota or Clarkson or wherever you are, you know, freshmen all come and arrive at different points uh, to get to their game. And I'll give you an example is, is like Snugger who gets a hat trick, a second game of the year. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, it's a second or third game of the year. Third, third, well, third game. Yeah, immediately okay. when that happens, the, you're in a good spot. Like you feel good about your, your game and you can go forward. And I, you know, that's what all of us coaches wish that we could just bottle up that, that, we had a bottle of that confidence that you could just give them a little sip and it's there, but it, in, it happens at different times. So Jimmy found it very quickly. Uh, now Logan was playing great early, but he didn't, if he had one point, he was mad because he wanted five points. <laughs> and, and, and I'm, I'm just, and it's really been in the last few weeks that Logan really has settled in and we're starting to see, the, the 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 greatness that Logan has be, but he kind of carried frustration early in the year and, and was looking around the corner and waiting for it to happen but we could see it and we would just smile with him and go just wait it's gonna come like and now he's got a smile on his face um and he he settled in now and it took a little little longer we, you know nice that we call it nice big bully he settled in right away last year mm-hmm. but you know out Mick, you go back, you, you remember Blake Lazat, I think only had yeah. two goals at Christmas. Yeah. And, you know, we all joked, you know, he was kicking the dog at home and was <laughs> pissed and, you know, very angry and not happy. And then the second half, he rips it up and a year, you know, a year and a half later is in the NHL. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing we coaches watch these young kids go through because they all want to solve the Rubik's Cube. They all want to solve the puzzle right away. Yeah, it takes a little time, but these are two awful special players, and we got to, we actually got to pile more of young guys that are really uh, impactful for us, and, and are going to even be more impactful the second half. But but those two are having terrific first halves, and and it's only going to continue. Logan Cooley was the Big Ten's number two star of the week last week after what he did against Michigan State. As we're speaking, our friend Scott Slark sends me an email that Logan Cooley is the number one star in the Big Ten this week after the, the weekend he had against Wisconsin. So uh, not, not a lot of question about his game or, or you know, the, meeting the expectations a lot of people had for him. And uh, so let's talk about Cooley, Snuggerud, Luke Middlestead, Ryan Chesley. All of them are in Michigan right now trying out for the World Juniors. This is an area where you have a lot of expertise, and we wanted to kind of pick your brain about some of your World Juniors experience. You've been an assistant coach, uh, I know, under Bob, or excuse me, under Don Lucia, and then uh, a head coach on a couple of teams, one of which won a gold medal. Just how much does this kind of time of year kind of take you back to those experiences, Bob? Well, it's it, it's not, it's just, it'll come up and, and once we really get to the holiday and it starts in Christmas. I mean, the World Junior Tournament is fabulous. I mean, it's, it, to me, the outside of the Olympic, it's the greatest tournament in hockey, uh, um, international uh, from an international standpoint. And, and it's what's great for the U.S. We've just watched the development of, of USA hockey to, uh, you know, all, all orchestrated, I really believe, by Jim Johansson, uh, who was just inducted into the uh, the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame and what a terrific job. But you go back not that long ago that, you know, the U.S. and the and, and you talk to older players, and I mean older 20 years ago, you know, they were just maybe they could get a sniff at a medal, mm-hmm. you know, and it wasn't even on the radar. And now the expectations are only to medal and 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 to play for the gold. And that's what's great for USA and, and, the, and the growth we've had in our sport uh, at just a uh, 
you know, it's been a comet how U.S. I think has grown in in hockey, and we're all benefiting from it. But it's a great tournament. What an opportunity for four of our guys to have the opportunity. I know they they've got to cut some guys down uh, before they get up to up to Canada, but um, we're, we can't wait to watch. And it's it's always a, a great tournament. So, so when you get you get asked to to be the head coach of, of, of that team, what what's kind of next? I mean, do do you have a, a lot of say, all the say in in the the staff? How how does that? What's the process like from the time that you kind of get named the coach and, and you know on there? Well, I can, I mean, I the only GM I worked with was was JJ, and yes, he he gives you. Uh, uh, you work together on the staff you want to put together and, and uh, you know, the puzzle that you want to solve there. And that went very quickly. So both years I had the exact same staff and, and um, the, the Grant Patoni and Greg Brown and, and Chris Mayotte and, and obviously killer Steve Miller, uh, um, great staff and fun, fun guys to be around. And then, it, then, then JJ has his staff. Uh, uh, from the player side and the player procurement side and and you all kind of work hand in hand um, you know to work to the you know it's a process it's just not one person is going to make a decision and, and you have to follow the process and the process started last summer uh, by identifying players at the camp and then and it, it goes all the way till right now and uh, um, who had you know who's been playing great and and really coming on and and then you have the the camp that they're going to start they started yesterday i believe uh and then two exhibition games once they get up to to canada um to put the team together and there's just not one part of it it's the whole process that you've got to piece together and you're and you know injuries always play a big part of it and i haven't heard any reports on that but i know we lost a couple of guys to injuries but that just gave opportunities for someone else. And uh, everybody's got their finger on it. And it's when you got a group of people that really can collaborate with it and, and all feel a part of it, it it's pretty special. You, uh, you're handed, I'm using this year as an example, Rand Pachtold, who's the head coach of Team USA, has been handed 34 of the, of the top players in the country. Obviously, he's got to get that down to 23. What, uh, what's that process like? That's gotta, that's gotta be, uh, <laughs> where a coach earns his money trying to figure well, out which, which guys. I mean, I'm, I can, I can only tell you that it, it's, it's really difficult, but at the last, you know, when you get down to the right at the end, you've got to make a decision. You're probably not going to go wrong with either way that you go, you know, <laughs> sure. you really, you really are not. And then you're judged by the end, the end results. Uh, you know, JJ used to say, when we get down to, I go, what do you think JJ? And he'd say, well, you're the one that's got to stand at the mic you pick. <laughs> uh, um, and, you know, thank goodness we picked right and, and the right things went our way, but it's, it is difficult, but you just have to make the decision and, and move on quickly because then you're getting to your team in the tournament. That's uh, you can't agonize over it. And, uh, and a lot of times I can tell you that, you know, you're not going to win the gold medal or, or medal because of the, you know, the 22nd or 21st or 20th player that you're adding. It's, it's going to be one through 15 that, that, you know, those top guys have to perform. It's a player's tournament. Uh, that's one thing I'll tell you. It's not a coach's tournament. It's a player's tournament. So, uh, you want to be healthy and you want to be hitting on all strides and you want your top guys going. Yeah, I would imagine that, you know, as a coach, uh, you know, you, now you, you turn around, the turnaround on that is so quick. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to imagine how you even try to get a little bit of chemistry or find out, you know, have guys kind of get to know each other a little bit before you guys even have have a game. I would imagine that's almost one of the bigger challenges. Well, they, to be honest, a lot, you know, a lot of the core of the team will have played in the, in the, on, with the program and the national development program. And all these guys know each other, you know, that, that very rarely that you've got someone there that, that isn't connected to a big part of the group. You know, that's just how small our hockey world is now, you know, and it started in the camp in the summer, um, you know, where they start to form those, you know, or re you know, reestablish their, their relationships with players, form relationships. And then you're together for 25, you know, 25 to, to 30 days that you're together with this group. Um, 
trust me, by the end of it, you know each other. And uh, <laughs> um, so that, believe it or not, that 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 comes very quickly. You know, uh, following the Gophers, your your Gopher teams around the last four years, Bob. You've gone into some intimidating places. You know, Penn State is a, is a tough place to play when the crowd gets rolling. Yost Ice Arena can be, you know, a, an intimidating place. You're you're taking your team into St. Cloud next, you know, which I know is a place that's going to be fired up to, to see your team. But I always think of of you in the locker room getting these players ready to face a hostile environment. I, I go back to that gold medal game in 2017 against Team Canada in Canada. I, and I think, you know, if here's a guy who's led a team into a hostile situation, I can't think of one maybe more intimidating than that. Just, just what are your memories of, of, of being on the bench for that game and, and getting your team ready to play that game? Well, it, it started in the summer because Canada came to, uh, they came to, to, to play in the, you know, with Sweden and Finland, we have that summer festival and Canada came that year. And Jordan, we, we had some intimidating players, Jordan Greenway, um, um, Charlie McAvoy, you know, just to, just to name a couple and, and tons of talent, but, but, but Greenway got in their head, uh, which he can, I mean, he, he was intimidating. And, uh, what I remember most is the gold medal game is about to start. And I started Greenway for sure. And he kind of took two or three steps over the line and stared their bench down. And they may not want to agree to that to this day, but, you know, there were there were not there weren't a lot of red white and blue in the stands that night it was a lot of red and black but greenway put the stamp down that we're here to play tonight and it was pretty cool to see you know like it's a players tournament and the and they had some ball players on that team and this was two teams that was we're going to go after it and and you know end up being just a terrific hockey game but that you know jordan greenway made sure that that he put the his foot down that we're here to play tonight and he delivered too. And, and I love watching him with the wild when, when he's on, he's coming back from an injury, but he is, uh, he's got, he's got winter in him. I can tell you that. You've accomplished so much, Bob. I mean, but, but that gold medal, I mean, is, is that kind of the height? I mean, you know, to do that for, you know, for the national team and everything else, I mean, that, that yeah. I would have to think that's the top. Thank God for Troy Terry. <laughs> you know, as, as my good friend frank saratori said once he goes you need to run you need to hold a seminar how to win a gold medal and never win a game uh, <laughs> we, we two two shootouts to get to the thing well i i told him hey i don't make the rules on the shootouts but um it was it it, it was it's just more mick i can I, yes it was huge win but it's the group that you're with they, they you know, I'll even go from my days in St. Cloud or wherever I was an assistant or even here now, your staff, you're, you're so close mm -hmm. with your staff and the people that, that work behind the scenes. And, and, you know, when you accomplish something and, and so fortunate that that happened to be a gold medal, uh, you know, you kind of carry that, you, you as a group carry that the rest of your life together. And, and, uh, and even if we wouldn't have won and what a special group to be around and, um, Thank goodness we did, by the way. Uh, but it's uh, it is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I can tell you it's a it's a pretty cool thing. Talking with Bob Motzko, the head coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers, about uh, his team and about his experiences with World Junior Hockey. So, 2017, you win a gold medal in Canada. The next year, you came back and coached the team again. Didn't repeat as gold medalist, but you were the home team this time, playing it in in Buffalo and. I, I've got to imagine a, a pretty cool experience, an outdoor game at the Buffalo Bills Stadium. I, you know, there were, I think, 60 some thousand in attendance. What what was that like? And 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 what do you think of the whole outdoor game concept? Because I'm sure the Gophers get some some offers to, to play outside now and then. Well, I've kind of jokingly and seriously said I've been there, done it, uh, you know, it was cold and, you know, it was a blizzard going on. So the, the atmosphere uh, I think for the players and fans was, was crazy because of the snow coming down and, and, and by the way, we, we were the home team, but we sure didn't, you know, Canada tra travels so well. I, there, there were awful lot of Canadians in the, in the, in the stadium that day. Uh, I was cold <laughs> and, and uh, you know, we won the game again on a shootout. 
and um, I think we had to come from behind in that one as well. Uh, but it was uh, it was a it was an experience. You could say you'd done it. Uh, <laughs> I would prefer to keep hockey, you know, indoor because it's really for the fans and the and and I know the players enjoyed it. So, but when you can't have an event, if there's that much enjoyment from the fans and the players, then I, then I'm all for it. With the, uh, I've kind of. I hope I've coached my last outdoor game. <laughs> when it comes again, it comes again. Uh, if, if if you were get get an opportunity again to to, to do something with with uh, the national, you know, with the national team, when I, I would imagine uh, you, you would take that opportunity. Yeah. Huh? Well, I've 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 also kind of jokingly said I hope they never ask. Because, <laughs> you know. Uh, I had a great run when I did it and, and I, you know, Mike Hastings is taking a run at it now and, and, and Rand's getting his first crack at it. And Nate Lehman went twice. And some of these coaches that haven't had a chance, I think it's awesome too, that, that we keep developing coaches too, and giving them that, that opportunity. I'm just really forever grateful that I got the opportunity and if, and if it never came my way again, I, and I'm the, I'm, I, I get as much enjoyment watching these coaches and, and working with some of these coaches now and uh, as they go through their experience and being a fan. So, and I, and I mean that, um, um, but it, I just put it, I'll just end it with that. I, I hope they don't ask again because <laughs> you can't say no, but, uh, uh, but I, I had a blast. Back uh, back home at Three Marina at Mariucci, you're off now uh, until I believe it's the 29th. You have an exhibition game versus the U18 team. One thing, again, covering this team for the last four years, as as you've taken over the program and kind of started to grow things there or, or regrow things there. Um, it, it's fun. It's a fun scene every night when the doors open and the students, there's a mad rush to get the, the front row seats. I mean, that's one thing that's really impressed me is the, the student interest in your program has really come back. And, and that whole end of the rink now, it seems like is, is students making a lot of noise. Just how much fun is that atmosphere, you know, as the home team, as, as the guy that they like, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and to see that kind of uh, regrowth of interest in go for hockey. Well, it, what's crazy is we've talked about it is what, what we've gone through here. You know, remember year two is when COVID shut us down. Uh, and I remember there was a playoff game. It might've even been that year where, you know, Michigan and there were only, you know, there, there were only 1600 people in the building it was during the state tournament. And of course that makes the, the social media headway and then COVID hit. And then, uh, shut that season down the entire next season and now we're seeing this this re-energized uh enthusiasm from the student base um that's that's incredible and we're not we're all you know is it, is it because of covid and everyone was locked down for so long and getting back to sporting events our crowds are i mean our, our crowds generally over the last two years have really started to come back and, and, you know, we've always said Gopher fans have never gone anywhere. We got to give them a reason to come back. And maybe it's too, you know, our, you know, uh, our, our team's been doing better the last few years coming out of COVID, but the excitement in the building is greatly felt by our players. And, and then that student section just gives the building. I mean, it is an incredible scene what's happening with our student section right now. And give our athletic department some credit, you know, I think from a marketing standpoint and in in their efforts on that side, uh, it's been a collaborative effort. Hockey team, you know, on the climb and fans coming back from COVID and um, I know they lowered ticket prices and, and I think they had gotten a little too high all over the country in all sports. But right now there's an uptick and we're sure enjoying it. Speaking of students, uh, your, your, your family is doing some, uh, something, starting something wonderful here uh, with students at the University of Minnesota with, with scholarships. Uh, Bob, just uh, tell everybody a little bit about uh, what, what, what you and your family are doing. Well, it was, you know, it was nothing, you know, obviously we lost Mac uh, uh, a year and a, you know, was, you know, to me, it's still yesterday, but mm. he was, you know, he was my pride and joy. And, you know, I got two other kids, but I was awful close with this kid. And, 
Um, and, and Mick, I know you got to know Mac and, and he was a giver. I mean, it was the, the stories we've heard now since he left, but, you know, as a parent, you know, you, you, you want to do things that, that just honor his memory and keep his, you know, and, you know, there's no playbook, you know, that's one thing you learn when you go through losing a child, there's no manual, there's no playbook, but it came out when we had, you know, eight Mac were 18, 18 has been a, you know, there are 18 hats all over a lot of them in St. Cloud and bumper stickers and, and was his number. And, you know, the, we got, you know, we did get a, a golf, a master's golf flag from Tiger Woods uh, because of, you know, the, you know, Max love for Tiger and golf, but 18, just a synonymous, we had 18 home games this year. And then it just kind of my, my wife and I were in the car then we were, I remember driving and I said, we should do something to honor Mac and a scholarship for kids. And she said, let's do it. It was like a really a 10 second conversation and then brought it on to our university. Of course, they jumped on board with it. And I wish I could watch it. I've seen a few videos, uh, um, but you know, every home game, they're giving a thousand dollars to a student and we sure hope it's going to a student that really needs it. And because that's what Mac was, Mac had a heart as big as this world and, and, and gave it to every friend or even people that he didn't know when he came in contact with them. And that's all we're trying to do is, is, is dishonor Mac and, and uh what a what a gift he was to this world and, and um so we we hope that's just one small way that that it it, it can it can help something in, in honor mac born born out of a tragedy obviously but uh, i have gotten to watch uh, a lot of these scholarships being awarded it's a it's a cool scene you know goldie gopher's got a, a rolled up scholarship paper in his hand and the, the students have figured it out too and they're all trying to get goldie's attention and i i interviewed the uh the student who was who got the scholarship at the last game at saturday night against wisconsin he was a majoring in finance kid from plymouth he's a junior he says oh boy i could certainly use the money for tuition and all that so Good. so re really a really a neat thing to, to come out of you know obviously an unthinkable situation for you. so gold goldie's in charge you know he's <laughs> the one that dictates this so if anything gets mad you got to get after goldie uh um we didn't know quite how to do it so they put it in his hands well i gotta tell you bob i saw mike eaves last night he was at the wild game he's scouting now for for columbus in 2006 when he led wisconsin to their most recent national championship all year he talked about climbing a mountain we're climbing a mountain you know all that and I heard kind of a similar rhetoric from you on Saturday that you're halfway up the mountain and the toughest part is still to come. Just, you know, what do you, what do you do? What do you, what do you think about as the second half of the year? Uh, you know, you got some time away from it now, obviously, but man, that, that series at St. Cloud is going to come up pretty quick. huh? Yeah. It, it's going to come very quick and, and, you know, but it's, here's the deja vu part. You know, we do have this break in college hockey that, that, and it is a break and it it's, you know, darn near three weeks uh, because we're in finals and there's no practice. And then our guys go home and then we come back and, you know, we do have uh, an exhibition game. Now we'll have four players gone, but we'll have an exhibition game with the U S program. And then we do go up to Bemidji yep. uh, uh, to play an exhibition game on the 31st um, and, and to get ready. But it's it, in, of course, it's going to be an important series, but we got it. All of us college programs come back and you got to start to, put the pieces back together again. And it comes quick um, and just, you know, it'd be great to get off to a good start, but we got to, you know, we got to reestablish ourselves, then get our players back from world juniors and, and then get ourselves back into league play and, and continue to climb forward. But for us, it's pretty simple. We, I mean, we've got talent and we're scoring some goals right now, but our, our, our key to our success has been, you know, our, our defensive core and Justin close and how we are defensively. But we 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 kind of let our offense dictate us sometimes, and we get loose. And we, that's that's our big thing. The second half is, is we have to know that balance between staying tight. Like we we could hold a team to twelve shots in in a game, but then the next night we give up thirty five because we get a little loose. Because you know that's the nature of a team like ours. We're going to get to the offense. So that's our going to be our battle cry the second half, the balancing act of, of staying on top of our offense, but but staying tight and in, in, in staying together and playing a winning brand of hockey. And, and we did that a lot the first half. 
but we do mix in we, we do mix in some looseness in there but that comes when you re, you know you have a team like this then but we've got great leadership and great buy-in and 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 if we can do that then we're we're gonna we'll be cooking with some gas but we know we can score goals and we know we can play defense but we got to have it all come together on on a real consistent basis Lots to look forward to in the second half of the season for Gopher fans. And uh, we, we promised you a half hour. We're at that mark. We better uh, we better let you go because I know you got a lot to do, even even though you're on a break. Bob Motzko, head coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers and uh, a longtime uh, experienced world juniors guy. That that part of the season is coming up as well. That's Mick Hatton. I'm Jess Myers. This is the Rink Live podcast for another week. Thanks for joining us and catch all of our content on the rinklive.com.